welcome to the show. You're watching Tech 24. I'm Julia Seeger. Almost a year after a devastating fire caused major damage to the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris, we take a look at what technologies can help in its reconstruction. From 3D scans to acoustics and video games, we tell you how new techniques could be its saving grace. And in Test 24, Dan and Jay Cattle Car takes us outside the studio and even back in time with a mixed reality trip to meet those who risked their lives to join the French resistance during World War II. Now on April 15th, 2019, the world watched in horror as flames devastated the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. The iconic spire and wooden roof eventually collapsed, changing forever the French capital's skyline. And while the reconstruction process itself hasn't started, scientists and architects are planning it based on digital scans that were made before the incident. Brian Quinn has this report. April 15th, 2019, the spire of Notre Dame collapses, its woodwork in flames. While the cathedral was saved from collapse, it wasn't out of the woods yet. In the hours following the fire, teams from French architectural scanning firm AGP were called to the scene of the ailing cathedral. Their mission to create a post-disaster digital model. Faut pas hésiter. The fire shifted elements. Things moved, weaknesses emerged. It's crucial to find them, to analyze them, and we know how to do that, comparing before and after. A before and after analysis to facilitate the work of architects and the countless other trades involved in the reconstruction effort. For 25 years, these 3D experts have known Notre Dame inside and out, down to the millimeter, from its carpentry to its belfries, to the top of the spire. Since we had all the data, we pulled all the profiles of each flying buttress so that every curve of every support could be quickly pre-made and arrive ready to install. In its database, AGP has the cathedral's perfect digital double. That's true for other cathedrals as well, like the one in Saint-Denis. This is a replica of the eastern wing to help model the spire. To understand this unique knowledge set, we meet AGP's technical director for the Saint-Denis Basilica, where yet another marvel of Gothic architecture will soon be a giant worksite, this time for the reconstruction of its missing north tower and spire. AGP's technical director says the approach here is identical to the one used at Notre Dame. The scanner that you see here creates a cloud of points in 3D that we use to create a composite image. The idea is to have a complete picture. By the end, we'll probably have between 50 and 100 billion measurement points for the entire cathedral. In these images, we interpret them to make plans that will help with the reconstruction of the spire. Plans drawn with the help of drones for the exterior, 3,000 different measurement positions for the interior, and these balls which serve as compass points. A new generation of stonecutters now has its work cut out for it decades into the future. Saint-Denis is a 12-year job minimum, for Notre Dame, experts say it could be 20 years before the cathedral is fully risen from its ashes. Now, another aspect that is keeping scientists up at night is how to recreate the cultural icon's complex signature acoustics. Cathedrals may sound the same to us, but in reality, no two are the same in the way sound soars and reverberates inside. We spoke to Brian Katz, the head of a team of specialists from the CNRS, France's National Research Institute, that is helping understand the acoustics of the main space. About five years ago, uh, we did uh, a project on how to reconstruct virtually uh, the acoustics of Notre Dame. Uh, so we, uh, with the National Conservatory, recorded an orchestra performance, and then we made measurements inside the cathedral and created a virtual model that was calibrated to the cathedral. And with that, we could recreate the performance of someone anywhere inside the cathedrals to kind of highlight how the acoustics changed uh, within Notre Dame. Our, the acoustics of cathedrals hasn't been 
studied nearly to the extent as the acoustics in, say, concert halls and theaters. So it's a relatively unknown uh, kind of acoustic design. So we need to understand better what the importance of different factors are. And the two things that we're focusing on right now are uh, the vault, because that was something that was actually destroyed in part during the fire. Um, but also to better understand, for example, columns and the differences between simple columns and fluted columns and multiple columns, because those are, those are the primary surfaces between the audience and uh, between the public and where the music is being created. The Notre Dame Cathedral was also featured as a digitally explorable building in the 2014 video game Assassin's Creed Unity, which is set in Paris during the French Revolutions. Developers spent almost 14 months recreating Notre Dame for the game, with the structure becoming the game's benchmark. Well, to speak more about it, I'm joined by Mélanie de Riberol, Director of New Business at Ubisoft. Thank you very much indeed for being with us. Thank you. Hello, Julia. So Ubisoft offered its support to help in the reconstruction of Notre Dame. Have French authorities gotten in touch with you and could you indeed potentially help in that matter? Uh, yes, after the fire, Ubisoft uh, made a donation for the reconstruction of Notre Dame, uh, but we did not offer our 3D model of, uh, of Notre Dame that we created for Assassin's Creed Unity as a reconstruction model, because it's not an, arch an architectural one. Uh, however, it is a very accurate model with a very strong um, uh, artistic value. And we decided to create a virtual visit in virtual reality of the monument uh, that we started showing around to um, the actors of the reconstruction and to museums, and which can be used as a communication tool, a very powerful communication tool for Notre Dame. Now, Melanie, it seems like gaming is now playing its part in helping preserve the world's historical and cultural heritage. How is that? Uh, as creators of uh, history-based games, uh, Ubisoft is very committed to bringing cultural heritage to its gamers through video games. So the Assassin's Creed series for more than 10 years has revisited key periods of time such as uh, Italian Renaissance, uh, French Revolution, Ancient Greece, Ancient Egypt. And for each of these games, the teams have worked closely with historians, with architects, uh, with uh, experts of all kinds to, to create the periods with more accuracy. And outside of the video games field, uh, we at Ubisoft also collaborated with museums such as uh, the Arab World Institute for the exhibition Age Old Cities. This exhibition um, was showing to the world the damages of different cities of the Middle East destroyed by conflicts. And we offered uh, the uh, VR experience, the virtual reality experience in the, inside the exhibition that immersed people in six different monuments of the Arab worlds that are now uh, inaccessible or uh, destroyed. Melanie de Riberol, thank you very much indeed for that. You're welcome. Thank you, Julia. It's time now for Test 24, and this week, Dan takes us at the Musée de la Libération in Paris for an immersive experience inside the French Resistance. Today we are at the Museum of Liberation of Paris, which 75 years ago served as the headquarters of the French Armed Forces. It is located 60 feet underground. On its own, a visit to this museum is extremely interesting, but with the addition of technology, it becomes more immersive and it enables visitors to relive the experiences of the past. Let's take a look. To talk more about this technology, I am joined by Scarlett Greco, who is the Digital Project Manager of the Museums of the City of Paris. Thank you, Scarlett, for your time. Could you tell us, why did you choose HoloLens for this experience? We chose HoloLens technology to allow visitors to see what life was like for soldiers in the bunker. This technology allows us to reconstruct scenes, objects and figures in a historic setting right here in Paris's Musée de la Libération. Ah, c'est vous. Entrez. 
I'm being taken on a guided tour by Jean, who is a virtual resistance member. Madame Roll, nous voilà. Entrez, je vous en prie. They have recreated how the room used to look 75 years ago. There are some banners, there's an old clock. There's a big table on which there are a number of files. And Colonel Tongi is still talking to me. Que vous voyez ici, ce sont les FFI et les résistants. Notre mission, c'est d'organiser l'insurrection de Paris avec les Parisiens. Entrez donc. This was the nerve center of the uprising against the German army. Ici, on centralise parce qu'on regarde. There are telephone operators working non-stop, connecting different lines, writing messages. Wow, I really felt as if I was a part of the experience 75 years ago. I'm now joined by Philippe Riviere, who is the digital head of the museums of the city of Paris. Thank you, Philippe, for joining us. Thank you for the visit. What technologies in the future are you thinking of using in order to make such experiences even more immersive? We've already worked on the olfactive experience in the Musée of uh, Cernuski, the Asian Art Museum. Museum of Paris for an exhibition about Chinese perfume and in each room uh, we propose uh, to the visitor to discover uh, the recipes of the old perfume but also to smell the old perfume going to the weirder smell to the more contemporary smell uh, to of course enjoy the, all the progression of the taste. And that brings us to the end of this special edition of Tech 24 dedicated to the Notre Dame Cathedral. We hope you enjoyed it and do stay with us here on France 24.